Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, a.k.a. Mr. No Shave November. Okay, I'm here with my bro, host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Cycle Jordan. It's Bray Nasterio Jr. It's Mr. Give Me My Belt, Hand Me My Crown. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're here to cover this weekend's fight night card taking place in Macau, China. Um, but first, before we get into that, I just want to direct your attention to the middle here. There's going to be a graphic showing you our all-time picks and percentages from the beginning of this show all the way leading up into this event. Um, right now, this will be the 40th event of the year. Going into the last two which will make for 42 events on the year. We've covered all 42 since the beginning of this channel. Um, so you'll be able to see uh, our all-time picks for hundreds of fights on the year. My bro host over here is uh, currently 100 fights over in wins versus losses. Woo! You know, a uh, nice 61% tile in picking. Myself, I'm in like the high 50s. You know, and I'm I'm not too far behind. I'm about like 12 or 11 fights behind. But uh, yeah, you know, and also shout outs to our guy over at a UFC Prediction Tracker. Make sure that you follow their channel. See how we are stacking up against the entire uh, picks, predictions, and betting sphere on YouTube. I mean, from your biggest channels all the way to your smallest channels. This guy covers it all. So shout out to them. And, uh, yeah, last week was pretty good for us. It was pretty good. But let me just say this. Like, look at that. Look at the uh, Picks and Predictions channel just because, like, we're stacking up against people who are literally in the game. We're stacking up and we're beating the shit out of people who are literally in the UFC and predicting UFC fights. Yeah, we've been on the list yeah. since... Uh... The fight card prior to 309. So we got two solid weeks of picking under our belts. So, uh, yeah, like I said, make sure to go check them out. Subscribe to their channel. Like the videos. Uh, leave some love in the comments. And, uh, yeah, you know, even get yourself familiar with some other sports betting personalities and channels. And, you know, get that much more insight and understanding of how these fights could play out. But uh, also, wait, wait, no? sorry. I'm My gonna bad. one more thing, one more thing. Shouts out, you beat me in the car last week. Hey, I did, I did, you know. Uh, shout outs on my behalf then to Marcin Tybora. Excellent. The fight played out exactly how I thought it would against Janata Denise. And uh, yeah, I mean, if I would have known what I know today, I would have picked a close to perfect card. There's no way I would have picked Arujo. You can uh, call me out. Call me out. Call me out. Go ahead and say what you I want to say. I was going to go for um, Jim Miller in his fight against Damon Jackson, but bro talked me out of it. I did talk him out of but it. But on the flip side, I did talk him out of picking uh, Ramiz Brahamai. So, Fuck. you know, it is what it is, man. But this is why we take chances here on Bro's Talk. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I think we have a 13-fight card ahead of us for this uh, Macau-China card. Um, it's going to be headlined by Peter Yan going up against Davidson Figueredo in a bantamweight bout. We're going to start off with the first fight on the card in the prelims. We got Mahashete Haisier going up against Nicholas Mata. We got Haisier coming in 2-2 two and two in the UFC. 12 and 3 overall and 3 and 2 in their last 5. We got Mota coming in 2 and 2 with one no contest in the UFC, 14 and 5 with one no contest overall and 2 and 2 with that one no contest in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with Hacer in this one by either decision or KO. Uh they're going to be the younger fighter by 6 years, the bigger of the two. Um they're definitely going to be like a striker with some grappling. They got power in the hands. Um, if it was me, I would uh, mix in the grappling, you know, to wear on Moda's energy. And just, you know, as long as they're able to manage theirs in the process, I feel like uh, some heavy bombs and, and, you know, just leaning on them through the course of the fight, that would be their route to victory. 
We got Moda coming in there, the older and smaller of the two fighters. Uh, he's a striker primarily. I wouldn't say there's any real grappling in his arsenal. Um, kind of chinny, kind of has bad cardio, especially when being grappled. Um, they're going to need to clip or hurt uh, Mahashete early, you know, to get the win. So, yeah, my, my bet's going to be with Mahashete Haisir. I'm going to go with Machete. He's going to leave a little <laughs> bit more of a nick on Mata than one might expect. There you go. Um, just a better fighter overall. Uh, Mata's, you know what I mean, been kind of sliding. Uh, Machete's definitely, uh, just in my opinion, a better fighter. I'm going to tell you, like, the, uh, uh, the analysis I'm going to give you on this particular uh, card is going to be less than um, uh, uh, great. Uh, I'm just going to tell you who I, I believe is going to win because there's a lot of people on this card that like I haven't seen. Uh, Masha Shetty and uh, uh, Mata, I've definitely seen both of them, um, and they're going to be great. It's going to be it's going to be a banger. It's going to finish in a KO. Masha Shetty is going to definitely fucking pick or finish this dude for sure. All right, all right. Moving on to another bantamweight bout. We have Long Zhao going up against Quang Li. Um, we got Zhao coming in 0 and 1 in the UFC, 26 and 9 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. We got Li coming in 0 and 1 in the UFC as well, 8 and 1 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. My pick's going to be with Lee on this one by either decision or KO. They're going to be the older fighter by seven years, the shorter of the two. Um, somewhat well-rounded. Um, more of a finisher, though, in my opinion, than Zhao. Um, needs to, they're going to need to apply some pressure and possibly mix in some grappling as well in this bout to get the win. Uh, Zhao, who's going to be the younger and taller of the two fighters, um, they're mostly just like a point fighter, uh, well-rounded in their own respect. Um, they're just going to need to keep this fight at distance, though, and, you know, keep Lee away from them, outlast him, and avoid the power to hopefully just take this to a decision, which is usually their specialty. So, yeah, I'll be going with Lee in this one. I've got to go with Zhao. Zhao's, as you said, I mean, I'm, I'm literally just running off your pick. He's the younger. He's the uh, a, 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 a taller, longer fighter in this uh, particular uh, bout. And so, that being said, he wins the fight. Again, I have no clue what these dudes are doing necessarily because they're not from the UFC. You know what I mean? I watch UFC. I watch LFA. I watch fucking PFL. I watch Ballot uh, Tour. All this other bullshit, right? No, you don't. But whatever. Oh, no. I'm like, not done. <laughs> I'm not, like, hey, I pull up. I, I be pull. Keep it real, man. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Stop fucking you know lying. Now you just made me mad. Okay. <laughs> I don't even watch that shit. <laughs> Who says I don't watch it? <laughs> There's a couple of standout bouts here and there, but you. You can't you can't tell me a Bellator or a fucking <laughs> right. <laughs> you ain't you ain't watch no fucking one championship or fucking Bellator or PFL, my nigga. Damn son. Ooh. And I don't watch Road to UFC or any of that other stuff. The most I watch is Dana White's Contender Series, because then I know who the next cat's coming into the UFC are. Bet. I'm going with y'all. <laughs> Tired of shit. Like, you know, I don't, don't want to listen to it. I don't want to hear it. Like, uh, you know what I mean? My picks are fucking great. You've seen the fucking overall shit. You know what I mean? It was right here. Right here between us. It might even be right here right now. But, <laughs> going with y'all. Fuck this bullshit. My bad. I didn't move it to the next. No, it's fine. No, no, no. Butt in on your we're good. But... No, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We're going to move on to the next one. All righty, then. Moving on to the next bout. We have a flyweight uh, fight between Loner Kavanaugh going up against Jose Ochoa. 
We got Kavanaugh coming in. They are making their UFC debut. They're seven and zero overall. And uh, we got Ochoa coming in, also making their UFC debut, and also coming in at seven and zero overall. Um, they are, however, four and zero and with one no contest in their last five fights. Uh, my pick's gonna be going with Ochoa though by either um decision or KO. They're going to be the younger and taller fighter of the two. A uh, striker with some grappling. Trains out of a shooter box, uh, which is, you know, Charlo, Charles Oliveira and all those uh, Brazilians who come out with the blonde hair. Uh, they all come from that camp, and they're all killers. Um, and, yeah, outside of that, I don't got much info on these guys. Kind of same thing that my brother was saying. I don't know a lot about these next probably like four to five bouts. But, uh, you know, I'm doing what I can with what uh, with the, you know, information I'm given. We got Kavanaugh coming in. They're going to be the older and shorter fighter. Um, striker that appears to have some, you know, some gas. You know, they, they, they go to a decision in their fights primarily. So they definitely got a gas tank. But once again, not a lot of info on them. Uh, I'm going to be going with the Choa. They just seem to have uh, more of a finishing spirit. So that's what I'm gonna be going with. Who you got? I've got to agree with Cho for the win. He does have finishing spirit. He is one of those fighters who's he, he's gonna die on his shield or he's gonna fucking put you on your shield. Um, so I respect it. Um, Cho has got to be my pick on this particular one. Um, again, I don't have a lot of information on a lot of these fighters. This this is one of the last cards of the year. I feel it's like a lot of contract shit going on right now. Um. And at the end of the day, like, if they're not fighting in the leagues that I just mentioned, or that apparently I don't fucking watch, based on my fucking brother's analysis, <laughs> I can't give you a lot of information on them. So, uh, I chose my pick on this one. All right, all right. So, uh, Fuck moving you, Cam. on to the next bout, we got Su Young Yu <laughs> going up against Balligan. Uh, geniusly. But what the hell, but? Hey, and I apologize if, <laughs> if that is, you know, a complete butcher of those two names, but I'm doing the best I can. Like, nah, bro, don't do that. Uh, nah, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Well, um, well, what if that was right, though? That might have been right. It could have been, but let's let's definitely not even do that. <laughs> fuck, uh, fuck that shit. <laughs> uh, I'll do what I want to do. <laughs> Both these guys are going to be making their UFC debut. Uh, Yu is coming in 13-3, and three, two no contests overall, and 3-1 and one with that one no contest in their last five fights. We got Genius Lee coming in 19-5. and five. I literally heard it the way you just said it <laughs> a second ago. That was wild. 19-5 uh, and five overall and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. My pick's going to go with Genius Lee. Uh, by decision or KO, they're going to be the overall bigger fighter, uh, well-rounded, and that's pretty much all I got about on them. Uh, you is going to be the smaller of the two fighters, well-rounded with the possible edge and the grappling out of the two uh, fighters. But once again, not much uh, to go off of with uh, the information I've been given, so um, I'm just going to go with uh, Genius Lee on this one. Hmm. So, so you, you, young you, Bruh. what the hell was that? Going <laughs> to lose against uh, genuinely like, like you know what I mean? Is that right? I mean, I said it's right. I'm going to say it. I could have done better, but I chose not to. Like, whatever. Anyway, I'm going with genuinely. Uh, I know nothing about either one of these fucking fighters. Oh, brother, Honestly, this guy I care, of course. Like, I care, like, going forward on who does what. Um, but based off the stats, I'm just literally basing this off of statistics on who's going to do what to whoever. Um, Jing will see. Um, is going to make shit happen. Um, bro, this is going to be a tough card for me. Like, a very tough card. And, like, this card, I literally went my gut on it. Like, and that's, that's, that's how I'm running. 
So you guys are gonna see how good my gut is or how bad my gut is. We'll see what up. <laughs> but uh gin. What did I say? You said I said it a little while ago. I'm not saying anything in the way that you say it on this show. So do what you gotta do. Whatever. You know what I pick. <laughs> Fucking run it, man. Moving on to the next bout. We have a, another flyweight bout between Karu Sahota uh, going up against Dong Hoon Choi. Uh, we got Sahota coming in, making their UFC debut, 12 and 2 overall, and uh, wow. 4 and 1 in their last five fights. There we Jeez, go. I don't know where that info went. Um, and then we got Choi coming in, uh, like what, like I said, making their UFC debut, eight and zero overall, and yeah, undefeated. But yeah, I'm still gonna go with Sahota in this one, um, by decision or sub. They're gonna be the older and much bigger fighter of the two, a uh, striker with some grappling, and hopefully they use their length to their advantage because outside of that, I don't have much info on this cat either so mm. uh Choi coming in they're the younger and smaller fighter uh it appears they got some cardio but they also have a couple of split decisions uh since they've moved up into you know this road to UFC uh promotion so um I don't know maybe th this is kind of where their ceiling's at at this point in their career uh I don't see how you know moving up in competition isn't going to get harder for them and possibly start uh, leaning these split decisions in the other direction. So uh, once again, not much info on them outside of that. So I'll be going with Sohota in this one. I got to go with Sohota too as well. Uh, again, I don't fucking know a bunch about these motherfuckers here. I'm just going to be real with y'all. You know what I mean? But like based on the numbers, I'm going with Sahota. He's fucking five inches taller. Um, there you go. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Sahota for the fucking win. Uh, obviously, like a, a a gang of reach. We're talking about like damn near seven inches of reach. What are we talking about? Um, Sahota for the win. That's where I'm at. I'm sorry. Like, I don't got a lot for y'all, but like. I also don't have, like, access to fucking, like, China's MMA scene. That's bullshit. <laughs> Moving on to a strawweight bout in the women's division. We got Zhao Kong Feng going up against Ming Shi. Uh, we got Feng coming in, making their UFC debut. 10-2 and two overall and are currently riding the eight-fight win streak. We got Shi coming in. They are making their UFC debut. Uh 16 and 5 overall. And um 4 and 1 in their last five fights. And let me actually, because these are saying tournament um on them. So let me not say that they're technically making their UFC debut because this could still be a UFC fight, but they're they're technically on some like road to UFC stuff, so they're not technically in the UFC. They're just Yo, fighting on a UFC fight, bro. Come a on. fight night card. I'm just putting that out there because they may say that their next fight, whoever wins this, is when they technically make their debut. That's besides the point, though. I'm going with Fang in this one by decision or KO. They're going to be the younger and bigger fighter, a striker with some grappling, and most likely will have the edge and stand up against Shi. Um, hopefully they use their length to their advantage as well. Outside of that, though, not much more on them. Uh, she's going to be the older of the two fighters by eight years. The smaller of the two, they're, they'll probably have the edge in the grappling. Um, but outside of that, uh, just like a point fighter, you know, and, uh, overall. And, um, yeah, don't got much on them either. I'll be going with Fang. I got a little thing as well. Bang just her body looks fucking thick. Bruh. You know what I mean? But like not like that, but like you know what I mean? Like she's just she looks diesel. Like she looks like she's going she just looks like the bigger fighter. Even at the same weight class that uh she's in, like because of course they weigh the same. But Fang looks bigger. 
she looks stronger. She looks like she can powerhouse um, she um, into submission, into KO, into decision. It doesn't fucking matter. Bang is my pick in this one. And again, like, yo, like, I'm throwing shit against the wall on this particular <laughs> motherfucking card because, like, I don't know these fucking people. None of them are, any, most of them are not in the UFC. Um, and it's very hard to try to find their fights or their stats or their fucking anything. But based on, you know what I mean, uh, size and those things, that's where I'm going with it. All right, y'all. Moving back to the men's flyweight division, we got a bout between Carlos Hernandez going up against Nyam Jargal. Huh? Tumendimbrel. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> uh, that's too many letters, my bar. Like that's wild as shit. We got Hernandez coming in two and three in the UFC, nine and four overall, and two and three in their last five fights. We got Tumen De Burrell Sorry, mate. coming in, uh, making their UFC debut, eight and zero oh overall. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be going with Tumen De Burrell in this fight by decision or KO. Uh. They're going to be the younger and longer fighter, somewhat well-rounded. Um, I feel like their gas tank could really be the only issue in this fight, being that they don't go to decision often. Um, but not much info on them, except for that they were supposed to make their debut sometime, I believe, earlier this year, and it didn't work out. Um, but, yeah, so I'm going to be going with them in this fight. We got uh, Hernandez coming in as the older fighter by five years. Um, less rangy than Tumen De Burrell. Uh, has grappling and a decent gas tank, but uh, no hands really. And uh, yeah, they're just gonna have to have success early. Probably get this to the ground as soon as possible to have a chance. Other than that, I see this fight playing into the hands of Tumen De Burrell. Oh, I'm gonna have to disagree with you. It's gonna go in the hands of Paul Fernandez. He's literally had UFC caliber fucking fighters. And of course, he's lost, right? We get it. He's what, two and three in his last five fights? I get it. But the fact is, he was fighting UFC caliber people for those last five fights. Uh, whatever this motherfucker's name is, has not been fighting that. So, um, I've got to go with Carlos Fernandez in this particular bout. Maybe he goes to the decision. I don't think he's going to necessarily finish. Um, he doesn't really have hands. He's got okay grappling, but that's who I got to go with in this particular bout. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. Moving on to the light heavyweight division. We got a bout between Volk and Ostemir going up against Carlos Olberg. We got Ostemir coming in 8-6 and six in the UFC, 20-7 and seven overall, and 3-2 and two in their last five fights. We got Olberg coming in 6-1 and one in the UFC, 10-1 and one overall, and they're currently riding a six-fight win streak. I'm going to be going with Olberg in this one by decision or KO. They're going to be the younger and bigger of the two fighters, uh, a powerful and technical striker with some grappling in their back pocket. Uh, they should have the edge in striking in this particular bout, uh, more so and specific to like the speed. And just crispness, crispness of their striking. Um, they should just keep this fight at distance and pick Ostemir apart, in my opinion. We got Ostemir coming in slightly older by a year. Um, they're going to be the smaller fighter of the two. A striker that basically just walks you down. Uh, willing to take one to give one. And, you know, has a strong resume in comparison to Olberg. Um, has fought pretty much all of the top at the top of the division, but just hasn't been consistent enough to, you know, get over that hump uh, in terms of contendership. And uh, they, they're going to need to hurt or clip Olberg early in this fight to uh, have a chance at winning. I'll be going with Olberg. Olberg's a motherfucking pick. Um, we're talking about 6-1 and one in the UFC. We're talking about the fact that uh, he's on a six-fight win streak. Um, He's uh, got seven KOs 
Um, he's 10-1 and one overall. So, like, if we want to talk about his overall versus his fucking KOs, we're talking about the fact that he's KO'd 70% or a little bit less than 70% because he lost one of all the people he's ever seen, right? So, Olbert has got to be the pick in this one. Olbert for the KO in this fight all day. That's what I got my fucking analysis on. Yeah. Running to the next one. Moving on to the women's flyweight division, we got a bout between Kong Wang going up against Gabriela Fernandez. We got Wang, 1-0 in the UFC. I almost, I almost set myself up. Let me tell you this, bro. Super pause. Can I tell you this? <laughs> like, if I ever met, because I met this one chick, her, her last name was Wang, I was like, who's going to take your last name so I could be Raymond Wang? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? I feel you. Like, like fuck my last name. Like, I'm just gonna be Wang. Like, Raymond Wang. Like, sets me up for fucking all kinds of things. What do you mean by that? No? I mean, I'm just saying no. Oh, shit. I'm dead, bro. Uh. <laughs> Grow the fuck so Wang's up. Wang's 1-0 in the UFC. 6-0 overall. Uh, we got Fernandez coming in. They're one and two in the UFC, nine and three overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Wang in this fight. Uh, <laughs> decision yeah. or kill. Pause. What? <laughs> You're gonna be going with Wang in this fight? Up. Uh, so they're gonna be the slightly older and longer fighter. Oh, uh, oh. dangerous striker. Oh. With Long some... Wang, huh? Hey, no ditty, man. No ditty. <laughs> Uh, they're gonna be the dangerous <laughs> way. Hey, yo. With some grappling, <laughs> uh, looking basically to fast track their way to a title shot and a rematch with Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, kind of similar to like you know a Israel Adesanya fucking Alex Pereira scenario. Um, uh, should be a prop up fight in my opinion. I mean, Fernandez is gonna be dangerous, but this is really you know, Wang's fight to win. Um, but I ain't gonna lie, with just the one fight and with, you know, the the opponent and how easy they made it look, you know, there's still a lot to be uh seen here. So I mean, I don't know necessarily if you would wanna put her in any uh parlays or anything like that, but uh definitely gonna be my pick. We got Fernandez coming in, slightly younger fighter, well rounded. Uh, somewhat dangerous, on, but nah, same kind of boat. Haven't seen much of them in the UFC. Uh, but once again, I think that this is just a fight for them, you know, to lose to, against Wang. But we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna be going my picks with Wang. <laughs> Should have said like Kong. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I mean. I'm gonna put it this way. My Wang is good. What? You know what I mean? Because she's my pick. So my Wang is definitely. <laughs> oh my God. It's not funny. Gonna win. My Wang is gonna win against fucking Fernandez. Chill the fuck out, bro. My Wang may fucking get her to a decision, or my Wang may get her to a KO. Really, nigga? <laughs> um. My Wang is dangerous when it's striking. My Wang is dangerous <laughs> <laughs> when it's grappling. Over a kid. Um, we'll just see. If not, my Wang wins. Pause. So, I pick Wang. <laughs> my Wang. Hey, yo, what the fuck? <clears throat> oh, man. All right. Well, folks, moving on to the welterweight division. We got a fight between Kong, Kanan Song going up against Muslim Salikov. We got Song coming in 6 and 4 in the UFC, 22 and 8 overall, and 2 and 3 in their last five fights. We got Salikov coming in. They are 7 and 4 in the UFC, 20 and 5 overall, and 2 and 3 in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Song in this one by either KO or decision. They're going to be the younger and bigger of the two fighters. Well-rounded. Um, might have the uh, edge in grappling in this one. But they do like to stand mostly. 
Um, it, I would say that if they pressure Salikov and get them, you know, just get on them early and just wear on that energy, I feel like that'll be their route to victory. Uh, Salikov, they're the older fighter by six years, smaller of the two. A uh, skilled striker. Um, I would say maybe they have the edge in the hands potentially. Um, but I'm not sure if at this point in their career they can actually keep up with Song. So um, they're gonna have to clip him, hurt him early at some point in the fight to be able to win this one. But I'm gonna be going with Song. I've got to go with Song as well. Salakov is not Jim Miller. Salakov is sliding. Mm-hmm. Salakov is on the end of the bell curve, and Keenan Song is coming up. Um, he's had a lot of fights as well, but he's not. He's not going down. He's going to be good. Um, he's a better fighter. Um, of course, uh, uh, my man has the puncher's chance of winning. It's not going to happen. So Song for the win. That's my guy. Um, we'll keep it pushing. All right, all right. Moving back to the light heavyweight division, we have a fight between Ozzy Diaz going up against Ming Yang Zhang. We got Diaz making their UFC debut, nine and two overall, and four and one in their last five fights. We got Zhang coming in. They are one and zero in the UFC, seventeen and six overall, and are currently riding a ten fight win streak. Um, my pick's going to be with Zong in this one by either KO or decision. They're going to be the younger and shorter fighter, but uh, definitely the more powerful of the two with some grappling in their uh, arsenal. Feels like to me this is another prop-up fight, you know, for a, a Chinese prospect in Yang who, you know, is just a, he just throws him. That's really what it is. He's going to go in there. Uh, he's going to try and, you know, tag Diaz early and just get him out of there. He's not a guy who likes to spend a lot of time in the uh, cage. So I think that the only concern that that raises at that point is his gas tank. So uh, you got Diaz coming in. They're going to be the older fighter by eight years. They're going to be the taller and slightly longer of the two. Um, Well-rounded in their own regard. Uh, they're going to be taking a long travel from America to China. So I would say that's probably the one thing going against them. But other than that, I don't got a lot of info on them. So once again, my pick's going with Zhang. I'm going to go with Zhang um, just because I'm gonna, not to like correct you, but like I did have a homie back when I was in high school. His name was uh, Liang Zhang. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, shouts out to you, my boy, um, which... Of course, that really doesn't point to anybody because like there's a lot of Liang Zhangs. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go with Zhang. Zhang's the winner. Zhang has a, a, I think, a few more routes to victory. He's gonna KO this motherfucker. Um, Ozzy Diaz, I think you're just a fucking layup from the UFC to get to him. Um, unfortunately, it is what it is. Liang Zhang's gonna be the uh, better fighter, and let's go ahead and run it up. All right, uh, moving to the women's strawweight division for the co-main event of the evening. We got a bout between Zhao Yang, Yang Zhao Yang going up against Tabitha Ricci. Uh, we got Yan coming in, or Zhao Nong, coming in at 8-3 and three in the UFC, 18-4 and four with one no contest overall, and 2-3 three, and three in their last five fights. <clears throat> We got Ricci coming in. They are six and two in the UFC, eleven and two overall, and four and one in their last five fights. My pick is going to be going with Zhao Nong uh, by decision or KO. They're going to be the older fighter by six years, bigger of the two, a dangerous striker, a uh, point fighter, but they're they're strong. And they will, you know, finish if given the opportunity. Um, Not quite at championship level yet, given their last fight with uh, Wei Li Zong, which that's that's how she says her name, so I don't know. Um, But uh, I feel like, you know, if anything, she'll be at the top of this division, you know, probably for, you know, a large majority of her career. Uh, Has 
a better level of experience in the UFC, a better camp than Richie. And I feel like if they just pressure him and lean on him, that'll be their route to victory. Uh, Richie's going to be younger and smaller of the two. Uh, more of a point fighter type striker with some grappling as well. Um, they're good, but just they're just not dangerous in my opinion. Um, they're going to want to keep the fight at distance and probably just, you know, point fight, pitter pat their way to a decision. But I just feel like uh, Zhao Nan Young has a route to possibly finishing them. So, uh, yeah, that'll be my pick. Zhao Yong Nan has fought uh, Wei Li. Tabitha Ritchie, this is basically how I want to uh, uh, um, uh, talk about this. Is Tabitha Ritchie ready to beat Wei Li? There's no fucking way she's ready to do that. Zhao Yong Nan has fought with her, lost by decision with her. She beats the shit out of Tabitha Ritchie. Like, I don't think there's more I need to say about that because it just is what it is. She's just not the level that she needs to be at to fucking beat a fucking Wei Li, let alone a fucking Yao, Yao Yan. What did he say at all? So, keep it cool. All right. <laughs> I was going to say a whole bunch of wild shit, but like, all right, but. Yeah, okay. Uh, moving on to. The main event of the evening. We got a bantamweight fight between former champion Peter Yan going up against the former flyweight champion Davidson Figueredo. Um, we got Yan coming in. They are nine and four in the UFC, seventeen and five overall, and two and three in their last five fights. We got Figueredo coming in. They are thirteen and three with one draw in the UFC, twenty four and three with that one draw overall. And four and one in their last five fights. My pick is going to be with Figueredo by either sub or KO. They're going to be the older fighter by five years. Uh, the longer of the two. De definitely well-rounded, um, but prefers to strike primarily. Uh, they'll take it to the ground if they want to is really how they apply their, their wrestling and their, their grappling. Um, they're super dangerous. The, they carry... Uh, you know, just as much of a threat in their hands as they do on the ground. Um, I feel like they're stronger and better conditioned at 135. Um, so if I, you know, in my opinion, they should close the distance, mix it up and wear on Jan's energy and uh, just, you know, put an emphasis on the grappling part of their game plan. And I think that they'll get this one done. Uh, Jan, they're going to be the younger and taller fighter. Um, they're definitely a, a dangerous striker, uh, with, with no real grappling though. They got good, like takedown defense, but once they get down to the ground, it, they really don't have nothing to offer down there. Uh, they're a technical striker with a great gas tank. Uh, feels like they tend to get stronger as the fight goes on, especially if it's a five round fight. You definitely want to try to get them out of there in that first, you know, two or three rounds because. Once the fourth and fifth come around, it's almost like he's got renewed energy. Um, five rounds is definitely going to play to their advantage. So I would say Figueredo definitely has to, you know, get this to the ground early um, to avoid gassing and then getting pieced up by Jan. Um, yeah, I think that Jan's going to want to keep this fight at distance. Just look to piece and pick apart Figueredo. And uh, avoid their grappling exchanges. That'd probably be their best route to victory. But my pick's going to be with Figueredo in this one. Let me give you guys a little bit of game. Okay. Um, look at two, two, two scorecards or like two, two uh, uh, records, right? So we got Peter Yarn, right, with uh, 17 and 5. And we're looking at Davidson Figueredo with 24, 3 and 1, right? He has gone through. If we all if we add it all up, let's do a little bit of math. It's gonna be a math class today, right? We're talking about twenty-eight bouts, right? Versus what's seventeen plus five, right? We're 22. talking about twenty-two bouts, right? So we're explaining both of those. And Jan, in that particular time, has lost more than Figueredo. So why do we think 
unless Figueredo is past his prime, because like once he gets past his prime, of course, we've got to know like, hey, that changes, right? You start losing a lot more once you're way, way, way old. He's not that fucking old. Are you sure about that? He's not. Like, he's old. He's been through some shit. But he's Davison Figueredo. He's going to win this goddamn bout. I'm sorry, PDR. You're just going to take this little L. It's going to be good for you. You're going to learn from it. And you, he might be a title holder at some point. What do you mean by that? After Davison Figueredo figures it out. Well, like I told you, Peter Young has already been champion. He's he has been champion, but he might be it again. You know what I mean? Is what I'm saying. I don't think so. No? No. No, I believe he will. But I'm saying, Figueredo is my pick, I guess, is what I was trying to get to. I, I tried to make it way cooler than apparently what it was, but that's fine. You know what I mean? Sometimes you fucking fall. Whatever. That's my pick. I've, we've made picks throughout the entire card, so I guess we're moving into the next segment of the things yeah, that we're doing. Take us into the parlay segment. Okay, we're going into the parlay segment with the parlay motherfucking god. Y'all know who the fuck I am. I fucking run shit. You know what I mean? I got a halo and a crown, not to mention the belt. You good? You need to want to take a second, gather yourself. All right. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. You just seem like, you know. This is going to be the ladies' night parlay. Oh, shit. We're back here at the ladies' night. Ladies' night once again. Here at Bros Talk Ladies. Hey, <laughs> Bros Talk Ladies. Just give, give, talk you know what? You know what? Just give, give it a minute. Like, I want to like, wanna hear the music when we do the ladies' night parlay. Maybe change your life today. Anyway. So. First pick of the parlay is Fang. Second pick of the parlay is my Wang. Come on, man. <laughs> Third pick of the parlay is Yawn. What do you want? What do you want from me? <laughs> Which Yawn? Oh, okay, Yawn. Okay, yeah. yeah just, oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, lady want. I just said it yeah, was a ladies' lady, night yeah. parlay. Yeah. So, lady, yeah, lady. Young. Three pick parlay. I'm only doing a three pick because, like, the rest of this card is wild. I'm sorry, like, I don't have a lot of <laughs> um, belief in the rest of it, but I do have belief in these three chicks. And I do have belief in the ladies. All my ladies. All right, repping one time for the ladies. Ray Bucks, you've seen it here first. Uh, I got something super basic. I got me a nice little two-pick parlay. Uh, we're going to be going with Olberg and uh, Wang. Not your Wang, but just Wang. <laughs> Look, but she is my Wang. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, your I Wang and the Wang I'm picking are wang. two different fucking Wangs, <laughs> my G. <laughs> if you want to spice it up, you can uh, add it. <laughs> Add something to the wang? <laughs> yeah, you gonna add up, something to the wang? The wang uh, you can go with a spicy Zhao Nong Yang on there. Like something on the... Hey, oh, 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 that's too much oh, now. You oh, stepped yeah. over the line now. We don't be talking that kind of shit. I said Yang. Uh, and uh, <laughs> extra spicy uh, Figgy on there. Davidson Figueredo. Uh, figgy wang like, like, a, like, <laughs> like a Fig Newton? Like on the way? <laughs> That's wild as fuck, yo. Freaky ass nigga, he a 69 God. Freaky ass nigga, he a 69 God. Hey. You want some like wild, crazy shit. You know what I mean? Uh, outside of that, y'all, um, <laughs> just want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we've gotten a couple of our episodes here recently over 100 views. So we definitely appreciate, you know, everybody that's tuned in and all the support. Uh, another big shout out to UFC Predictions Tracker. Make sure you check them out. Um, make sure that you follow us on IG at Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here at r1.mason. You can follow me at Utica underscore SME. You can also follow us on TikTok at Bros Talk MMA as well. Um, make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. And outside of that, man, uh, anything else?
I'm a motherfucking 100 picks up or winning. You know what I mean? Watch out, little bitch. 100 picks on the year. I'm over that. Like, but like not 100. Like, there's like a, it's a big number. You know what I mean? I'm still doing it. I was in the I'm top four. Winning. I was in the top oh, four. Oh, 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 I forgot. For the UFC predictions tracker. I was in the top four, you know, with that uh, oh. nice nine and three record on last week's card. You plus five. Oh, my plus bad. five ROI, right? <laughs> Yes, Plus sir. Plus five yeah. ROI. You know, you would have made money with your boy last week if you would have bet with me. So, mm. you know what's up. Uh, But, yeah. Anything else? Nigga, we can't lose. We ain't losing. We ain't, like, <laughs> I've lost a couple cards. I'm getting ready to look into that because we're going to do, like, a, a wrap-up at some time at the end of the year and figure out where that is. But I'm, like, I feel like I've only lost three cards yeah. in 12 months. And yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, you haven't lost a lot of cards at all this year. Not at all. At all. I know I've lost some cards. I can no. tell you I've lost some cards. Nah, but. but what? So maybe you lost six versus three? Like, what the fuck is that? I mean, like, on the year, yeah. That's card. Of, We're talking about cards. Three. We're not talking about months. Yeah. We're talking about cards. We're even talking about practice. Not a game. <laughs> We're talking about practice? Practice? Um, and got... it has been practice. I think a lot of it's been like practice cards. It's been yeah. like fight nights. It hasn't been like uh, event like you know what I mean, pay per view events. Yeah. So again, we it's harder to like gauge those cards that are uh, like not known people. Mm-hmm. So for sure, for sure, we only got two events left in the year, y'all. So you know, we got UFC three ten, and then after that, we got the UFC Fight Night card in Tampa. Both of those cards are gonna actually, you know, be pretty. Pretty stacked in their own regards to end out the year. And we go on about a three-week, four-week uh, hiatus. And then back at it to begin the new year, y'all. So, uh, once it's again. It's time to start busting cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, once again, this has been another episode of your favorite Picks, predictions, and just overall betting MMA sports channel. Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. Mirror my bro host extraordinaire. It's Ray Bucks. It's Chuckle Jordan. It's Ray Mysterio Jr. It's Mr. Give Me My Belt. Hand Me My Crown. Mr. Ask Your Mama About Me because... Should tell it. Who's he? I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to tell him? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I can say it on YouTube because I would get fucking canceled. You know what I mean, my boy? But like, hey, ask your mama. I didn't say ask YouTube. I said ask your mama. <laughs> Whatever, though. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, till the next time, we wish y'all nothing but the best. Happy betting. Until we meet again, we out. <laughs> this nigga is hilarious. <laughs>